Hello everyone, so welcome back to my channel and uh, to this video too. So this video is on structure of DNA and this video is going to be divided into two parts, part 1 and part 2. So part 1 would be the basic requirements to make a DNA structure and the part 2 is making a DNA structure. Yeah, right. You heard it right. And before watching, before coming to this video, you must have watched my previous video. So let's start with structure of DNA. Structure of DNA. So first of all, what is a DNA? Then anyone is going to answer that it is deoxy ribo nucleic acid so someone else will say that yeah it is a helical structure the model was given by watson and crick so yes it is a double helical structure double helical okay double helical means one ring and the other ring it just twists around each other and forms a helical structure and we name it as DNA. The thing, the strings you see here, these are not the guitar strings. These are hydrogen bonds that are formed between nitrogenous base pairs of DNA. We are going to study H and everything but in two parts. So the first part includes basic requirements. So for that, we have to see the name of DNA, which is deoxyribose. Or deoxyribose nucleic would be the first part and acid is the second part. So first part, the deoxyribose, what it is? Ribo, the word ribo has came from ribose sugar. Each and every one of us has a brother or sister who are maybe younger than us or older than us or shorter than us or taller than us. So ribose is sister of glucose. Yes, glucose which we consume in day to day life and it is glucose is made up of six carbon atoms, six carbon atoms whereas Ribose is shorter than it and it is made up of five carbon atoms, just of five carbon atoms. So what is this? Five carbon atoms? Just this? No, we are going to see the structure of ribose sugar and here is the structure of ribose sugar. Let me first draw the five carbon chain. First sugar has an aldehyde group. Here is an aldehyde group. It has an alcohol group too, downwards. CH2OH. Okay. The hydroxyl group, the hydroxyl group, the hydroxyl group, and then an hydrogen atom. Okay. So this is the structure of ribose. Give numbering to the carbon. This is the first, second carbon, third carbon, fourth carbon, fifth carbon. So this is the linear structure of ribose. But the story has not yet come detailed. This is the linear structure, right, of ribose. We want deoxyribose. So we will just remove an oxygen from the second carbon and this whole structure becomes deoxyribose. Still, still, the story is left. This is a linear structure and we want a cyclic structure. So for a cyclic structure, what happens is the C4 carbon tries to form a bond with oxygen of first carbon atom. The C4 tries to form bond with the oxygen of first carbon atom. And what structure does it form? There are five carbons. So we will draw a pentagon okay, shape. This is first, second carbon, third carbon, fourth carbon, here would be the fifth carbon. Okay, if you are not getting the point, let me summarize it. 
again this is the first carbon this is the second carbon the third carbon the fourth carbon and the fifth carbon one two three four five the fourth was trying to bind with the oxygen of first carbon so let us draw the oxygen of first carbon which is O H okay the second carbon has hydrogen atoms it is deoxygenate deoxy that's why an oxygen atom uh, the hydroxyl group has broke down the oxygen has went away this does have an hydroxyl group the fourth carbon the fourth carbon does have an hydroxyl group and a hydrogen atom the hydrogen atom is here the hydroxyl group is here okay so and the fifth carbon has two hydrogen atoms and a hydroxyl group this is the cyclic structure which is yet not completed which doesn't which hasn't yet completed the cyclic structure but this is the primary structure okay so what happens that the oxygen of the c4 carbon binds with the first carbon atom and when this bond takes place the hydrogen here the hydrogen of this hydroxyl group shifts towards sorry shifts towards this oxygen as it shifts towards this oxygen here comes the hydroxyl group and here comes the oxygen itself so let's draw another figure and understand the complete cyclic structure oxygen the bond has formed so first carbon second carbon third carbon fourth carbon here is the fifth carbon okay first carbon has hydroxyl group oh and a hydrogen the second carbon has hydrogen and hydrogen no hydroxyl group the third carbon has a hydrogen and an hydroxyl group the fourth carbon just has a hydrogen in it the fifth carbon has hydrogen hydrogen and a an hydroxyl group in it okay so this is the structure of deoxy ribose in the cyclic form okay this form is going to be used by dna deoxy ribose so this is the basic backbone of dna this is the backbone of dna the other thing the dna needs in its structure is or i must say are nitrogenous base pairs now why are they known as nitrogenous because they contain nitrogen in it why are they say say this base pairs because they are always in pair that's why the the name is nitrogenous base pair there are four nitrogenous base pair which are respectively guanine the very first the second one is adenine the third one is and guess yeah cytosine cytosine last one is thymine so why have written this in two different columns because guanine and adenine are known as purines the first type of nitrogenous base pair and the other in which cytosine and thymine are is known as pyrimidine so there are two groups of nitrogenous base pair purines and pyrimidines purines bind with pyrimidine it is no doubt in that and in that also guanine only binds with cytosine adenine only binds with thymine 
and the bond between them is hydrogen bond okay there are three hydrogen bonds in between cyto uh, guanine and cytosine there are two hydrogen bonds between adenine and thymine how so let's see the structure first of all okay guanine structure is purine have two rings in their structure one ring is pentagonal and the other ring is hexagonal oxygen the nitrogen the amino group okay this is guanine structure and in opposite side the cytosine structure is just made of one hexagonal ring and it is like somewhat like this it has an n h2 group above okay nitrogen here along with a hydrogen and an oxygen here a nitrogen in the ring wherever i have been treated anything uh, there are carbon atoms here okay this this is a carbon atom this is a carbon atom this is a carbon atom how they form three hydrogen bonds so if i i have just suggested you to just go and watch hydrogen bond in my previous video if you have watched that you might observe that there are there is hydrogen between two negatively charged atoms okay the distance here i am showing is huge but it is not that distance it is it could only be of 2.8 angstrom not more than that or 3 angstrom but it cannot exceed that similarly here a negatively charged nitrogen hydrogen atom sandwiched in between and a highly negatively charged nitrogen same is the case here a hydrogen atom and a hydrogen atom this hydrogen atom is sandwiched between oxygen and nitrogen so this is a hydrogen bond this is a hydrogen bond so this there are total three hydrogen bond h plus bond in adenine we have five ring structure and a six ring structure here there is a amino group above instead of being at the third carbon so an amino group a nitrogen a carbon and again a nitrogen here this is a adenine structure and now we are going to a thymine structure thymine structure is would be similar to cytosine means ring of Six. It is hexagonal. We have a oxygen here, a nitrogen with one hydrogen atom, again an oxygen here, and one nitrogen here. So where do you find the hydrogen atom? Uh, sorry, hydrogen bond. Okay, it is similar to the one ahead to you. So a hydrogen here, an oxygen here. Hydrogen would be a sandwich between the both of this. a nitrogen here a hydrogen in between and a nitrogen here so the hydrogen is sandwiched between them this is hydrogen bonding so gc forms three hydrogen bonds and adenine and thymine at forms two hydrogen bonds between them okay we got the concept that okay there is a deoxyribose sugar and a nitrogenous base pair which attach to each other but how the deoxyribose and this nitrogenous base pair are attached to each other so let's see that so this is the last structure where we ended last nucleoside to this nucleoside we have to add a phosphate group to make it a nucleotide which would be the functional unit of dna okay to the just a single unit of dna so let's bring a phosphate group it would be triphosphate 
rather than being just a single phosphate. First phosphate, second phosphate and here the third phosphate. charge brings negative charge to the DNA. The negative charge of these O in the phosphate groups brings negative charge in the chain of DNA. Okay. Now this phosphate group is going to bind with the sugar. This is the sugar plus base. So it is just going to form a bond between uh, with sugar by removing by removing H2O molecule and H2O molecule is just going to go out and the resulting reaction would form a nucleotide what it would be like PO, PO O negative, O negative, O negative and by the removal of H2O molecule, this O directly binds to the CH2. Okay. Let it bind like this. This is the sugar. And this is the nitrogen base pair. I am writing out it in short and not like this form. Okay. So this structure formed is now known as nucleotide. Sequence of this nucleotide in a chain in a row will form a single strand of DNA. Remember I, I have drawn, drawn double helical structure. So the sequence of this nucleotide, the stack of this nucleotide chain will form a single chain and the other chain would form the double helical structure okay so this is the first part of the video to watch other thing just go to the second part of the video just just after this video okay so hope you like it and let's jump out to the next video to understand how this double helical structure forms okay